Well, hey everybody, Matt here, and uh, we're gonna take a look at a video that um, I think is really, really important when it comes to editing our photos, and that's how much editing is too much. And I see this over and over again. I have so many people that ask me, you know, how do I know when I've gone too far? How, how do I know when I've over sharpened the photo, when I've done too much noise reduction or too much processing? How do I know when to stop? Um, so I, I, it's such an important area. I've probably been guilty of this myself where we're in a class and we hear somebody say, you're gonna take this setting and you're gonna adjust it to taste. What's taste? You know, how do I know? I don't think we're innately born with this stuff. So most of us have to learn it. And how do we learn it? This is say what would do it to your taste doesn't always help. So at some point I do believe our taste has to become involved. But what I hope to help you do here is start to adjust that, start to get a feeling for how much is too much, what are some common pitfalls, and then what are some ways that we can avoid them, okay? So you're watching this as one of the bonus videos from my Lightroom course. Depending on where you're watching it, uh, if you're gonna download the free files to follow along with it, just go right below the video page where you're watching it, or if you bought the course, you got all that stuff with it, okay? Now, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump in. And the, the first one here, is is highlights i see this a lot so i'm going to zoom in on the photo We've, we're kind of shooting into the sun right and i see a lot of people will shoot into the sun bright clouds and we'll go to the histogram you can see here you can turn on your highlight clipping warning in that triangle up top here so we'll turn on the highlight clipping warnings and um and then what i'll see is we'll go and and we'll take the highlight slider and just drag it down till all that goes away and what we are left with is basically a hole in the sky, a fiery hole in the sky, which I guess maybe the sun is, but it shouldn't be a hole in the sky. It's okay to have some of that bright area around here. So I'm gonna turn that off for now. And, and by the way, I'm just gonna jump in. I wanna show the outline really quick. Um, there is a whole section on um, exposure, shadows, blacks, whites, adjusting the histogram, everything that I just kind of talked about there. Make sure if you did buy the course, make sure you watch that section because there's videos that dive in to all of these different things here and how to set them, how to work with them. But for our purposes here, I just want to show that when we see our highlights that are clipped, just because they're clipped near the sun, we don't have to do that. It makes your sky look bad. It makes it look dark. It makes it look blah, 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 just yucky. So. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna turn that off. And if I do want to, you know, I'm gonna brighten this guy here. If I do ever decide I, maybe I wanna pull it back a little bit, that's when I'll go over to the, the graduated filter and I'll just kind of bring the exposure down and I'll just pull that back just a little bit. And as a little side note for you, if you do find that you have to, you know, intersect the sun with the graduated filter, there's a brush option. And I can go click on the brush. I can scroll down, click on erase, and I can go erase my darkness from that area. I didn't do a great job there, but I would feather it. I use a larger brush and I kind of just go and click a couple of times right around the sun and I can bring back some of that glow. So I can still darken the sky if it needs it, but I can bring back a little bit of that glow that's right around the sun. So I think that's really important. Um, next thing, th this is kind of tied into the first one and that is we've got to be careful of our highlights and our shadows. If we crank down our shadows and we crank up our highlights, look at what happens in the photo here. Let me go and zoom in for you. See these areas? See how we get some halos? Uh, we don't want that. I'm gonna go over toward the left-hand side of the photo. You'll see it there too. See the halo effect that we start to get the glow around some edges. So we gotta be careful when we're gonna do our highlights and our shadows. We have, to, we have to be a little bit more careful with them. If we do need to adjust those areas, number one, that's something to look out for, for over-processing, because you'll get that glow. Number two, that might be a time to turn to the brush and get a little bit more specific with it, okay? Now, next up, we got dehaze. Dehaze is an awesome slider. The problem is, is very, very rarely can we just go crank dehaze up, because what happens, and, and I see it a lot, is what happens, we go to the effects panel, we crank up dehaze, mountain range looks great, everything else in the photo is totally oversaturated. So we have to avoid that. Dehaze does good in so many areas, but what I find works best is, is I'll go back up to my basic panel and I'll adjust my blacks, which again, I've got you know videos on, on doing all of that and, and what to look for for that. I'll adjust the blacks, which gives me a little bit more snap to the photo, 
okay? Now I'm gonna look at the area that really looks hazy because all I wanted to do was punch up the color. I just want it to be not, maybe not so dull in the sky and the trees, but the mountains are obviously hazy. I'll go to my brush tool. I'll increase the dehaze slider. Let's go ahead and reset everything and increase the dehaze slider. And then I'll just paint over the mountains, okay? Now I'm gonna do it really quick here, but what I really do is when I have an area like this, I'm gonna use some combination of a smaller brush. I'll outline the area near the sky, and then I'll use a bigger brush to get the rest of it. And then you've also got some auto mask settings, which again, um, if you do buy the course, there, all that stuff is covered inside of there. But that's more of how to make the brush work a little bit better. This is more about over-processing problems where I see there's too much dehaze, and this is how you get rid of that. This is how you keep yourself from adding too much dehaze to the photo, and that is just brush it in to the parts of the photo that you need it. Don't add it to the whole photo because you do get that radioactive look with it. Now, the next one is sharpening. This is a big one. Um, this is so big that I actually, the, the, course, the course that I created, I call it the Lightroom course, but it's actually 15 courses in one. I broke Lightroom up into 15 sections. And one of those sections, rather than taking sharpening and dumping it into the develop module section and just glazing over all the settings in one video, I broke it out into a whole separate section. So it's like a mini course and it's got like eight videos on sharpening. Everything about sharpening, capture sharpening, creative sharpening, output sharp, everything you wanna know. So, but what I see a lot is, so how much is too much? You know, what does too much sharpening uh, look like? So let's go take a look here. First thing that I'll do here, let's zoom into 100% and I'll go down to my detail panel and I'll start cranking up some sliders here. And let's take a look here. So when you look at your photo and you see a glow around the edges and you see texture in the sky or on people's skin, that's too much sharpening, okay? It's the first sign I look for. First, I'm really gonna look for the glow. And where does the glow come from? That comes from radius pull back on your radius and you can help get rid of the glow. But now you'll see I still have a lot of texture out here in the sky. I'll go in a little bit further and you can see it. So when I see that, I'm usually, the culprit's usually gonna be um, some combination of detail and amount, all right? If you went really high with the radius, it's usually gonna be the amount slider. So I'm gonna pull back that amount until I see it or increase the masking slider, which will help pull it back from the smooth areas. So whether it's a sky or whether it's a person's skin, we don't wanna add more texture to the photo. So what I'm gonna look for to determine whether a photo is sharpened too much is I'm gonna go into 100% zoom. I wanna go up here to the top left of the panel. I'm gonna turn my detail slider off or my detail toggle switch off and then on. And if I see a little texture over the details, I'm okay. What I'm looking for are the smooth parts of the photo. I don't want them to look textured. So as I turn that off and on, do I see a big difference to me? I want it to be sharpened and I want it to look sharp, but I don't want to see a glow around any edges and I don't wanna see texture over smoother parts of the photo. So that's kind of the two signs that I look for. That's what I see a lot out there. You know, you see texture in clouds, you see texture on people's skin and their eyes. Um, different things like that. And that's a telltale sign of over sharpening. You'll see a halo around a building or a tree. That's another sign of over sharpening. When I see that, I'm gonna make sure I pull back on that amount slider. And that usually help out and the radius too. We don't wanna go too high with the radius because that's what controls that halo. Now, on the heels of sharpening, let's talk a little bit about noise reduction. So noise reduction is another big area that I see uh, you know, almost over processing done where we're we, we, feel, we feel we have to get rid of every bit of noise in the photo. So what I'm gonna to pose to you, by the way, this photo is uh, from a buddy of mine, Steve Seligman, he shoots a lot of wildlife stuff. And this is a popular place where you have to crank up your ISO. And, uh, and Steve works real hard you know, to get a nice sharp photo. And so what happens is we get this really nice sharp photo and we go ahead and we do our noise reduction and we blur it because we crank up our noise reduction. We blur everything. So what we wanna do here, add a little color noise, five, 10%, all that color noise goes away. Rather than add luminance, okay? Even though we can bring back detail with the detail slider, uh, when you go through and you watch that whole section on sharpening, you'll see that I talk a lot about this stuff. But 
even though that we can bring back detail with the detail slider here that really works on edges, look at all the detail we've lost in here. Okay, that's what we wanna worry about. So rather than do this, I bring it down to zero, I go to my brush tool, and I'll go and I'll crank up, let's take dehaze back to zero, I'll crank up the noise, and I'll just paint noise reduction in the parts of the photo that need it, which is generally not gonna be your real detailed areas, your star of the photo. Generally, the, the noise will blend in in those parts. It's, it's the backgrounds, it's the shadows, it's darker parts of the photo that the noise really sticks out. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna paint it away from those areas. And that way, I can keep the detail parts good, and I can just get rid of the noise from the parts of the photo that I need to. So that's noise reduction. Now, the next one, let's talk a little bit about portrait retouching. So we're retouching portraits. One of the common things that we tend to do is uh, we go in here and we will over soften skin. So I talk a little bit about color balance and I'm just gonna use this uh, eyedropper here just to get rid of that blue cast. But now let's go to the adjustment brush. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna take the adjustment brush. There's actually a preset all the way down at the bottom called soften skin. It's a default in Lightroom, it's not mine. Default right inside of Lightroom. Some of the other ones are mine, the numbered ones are mine, but these are defaults. And we paint on this softness to the skin. And the problem is, is we're killing all the skin detail. So I'm just doing a real quick job about it here. But what we've done by doing it this way is when I show you the before and after, we've basically turned her into a porcelain doll. That's before, that's after. So that's not what we wanna do. So you'll know, so how do you know when too much skin texture is too much? Well, we should see pores. We should see a little bit of the pores. We should see detail and texture. And, uh, and when we don't, when, it's, when it looks all smooth like this, that's when we know we've gotten too much. Uh, pull back on the clarity. It cranks it down to minus 100, split the difference. 40 or 50 is just fine. And then I'll go and maybe add a little bit of sharpness to it. It just brings back a little bit more of the texture on the skin. Don't crank it up 20, 30 tops, but a little bit of sharpness brings back a little bit more texture onto that skin there. So uh, take a look here. Now you can see our before and after, before, after. All we're looking to is to even the skin. We don't want to smooth details. And if you don't see details, that's your telltale sign that you've gone too far, okay? Last one, last one. Or you know what, let's do one more portrait retouching one. I included my photo for a reason because I hate to do this to other people because not everybody needs it. But this is, uh, this is an interesting one, is the eyes. What we do is we can take the spot healing brush and we can paint under the eyes. And we can smooth that out. Well, I see a lot of people just leave it at 100% opacity at 100%. And what's it look like? It looks silly, right? Take that opacity down, split the difference 40, 50%, even less, you know, 30, 40% before, after. All I want to do is lessen that area a little bit. I don't want to make it look totally smooth because that looks fake. I just want to lessen some of those lines that we get underneath our eyes, some of those shadows from the lighting or whatever it happens to be. Just lessen that. That's before, that's after. And, uh, and that's you know one of the things I see a lot is we do it too much, but that's the way to pull it back. Just don't leave the opacity at 100%, okay? Now the last one. Last one is a vignette. A lot of people add vignettes, I add vignettes to everything. Problem is, is we generally don't want you to spot the vignette. So what do you do? Well, let's go take a look at this photo here and uh, back out. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to my effects panel where I do the vignette and add a vignette. So I, I can kind of see that the vignette, you know, I can kind of see it on here and I exaggerated it a little bit, but here's the, here's the point. Here's a way to, to tell if you've really added too much vignette and that is look at the photo smaller. Look down here in your film strip. If you click above it, you can change the size of that photo thumbnail. If you look at your photo small and you can really see the vignette, you've gone too far. Now I'll even pull back on it to where you know, like right here. That doesn't look too bad up here, but still down here, I can see it. Look at your navigator panel. I can see it here too. So be careful with that. And the one way that, I don't know why, I don't know why it happens like this, but I do know when you look at a thumbnail, sometimes you can spot 
over processing um, a little bit easier on our photos just by looking at a smaller version of it, especially with vignettes. The other one is eye whitening. So another, let's go over to, to this photo here. And uh, there's an iris enhance. I'll kind of boost the exposure and we'll go in here and we'll just brighten her eyes. When we're zoomed in and we're doing detailed work, sometimes it's hard to tell that we're making somebody look like ET. It just happens, right? Um, before and after, you know, some, again, we just get, a, our eyes get accustomed to it. But when you look over here, it's now you can tell she looks like ET. When you look down here and you start to adjust the thumbnail size and the eyes really stick out at you, you know that you, you've, you've caused a problem here. So that's one, of the, uh, that's one of the ways that I use to make sure I haven't done uh, too much retouching is go look at a smaller version of the photo. If the eyes stick out, then you've probably gone too far with it. Okay, so there you have it guys. I hope this helps you out a little bit. Um, as I said in the beginning, I've probably been guilty of it myself, but I, I, I wanna do more than just teach you what all the settings are. I wanna help you get better at editing your photos and getting better at editing your photos is necessarily not always knowing what all the sliders do in the technical details, but knowing the boundaries of where they should go, knowing how to spot some over-processing in your photos and knowing some ways that you can start pulling it back. So hope you guys enjoyed and uh, thanks so much for watching. Talk to you very soon.